within, and again, machine learning, I think of uh, really being the intelligent automation of a data-driven process where there is data, there's some decision made upon that data, and there's some outcome that is being optimized for. And with that very simplistic lens, it gives us the opportunity to look and to say, okay, where within my, in this case, manufacturing process, do I have data that I'm making critical decisions and driving towards an outcome? Whether that outcome is uptime and performance and reliability of a particular piece of equipment, whether it's the quality and reliability of the widgets being manufactured on that piece of equipment, or whether it's how am I delivering those products to my end customers and then serving them over time. All of those have the ability to be understood and optimized with data. And so as we think about this, again, in an industrial or in a manufacturing space, the first step is you need to connect all of those processes. You need to manage and aggregate that data in an application and a workflow context. And you need to understand what's good versus bad. What am I trying to optimize for? And as you go through that opportunity, you'll understand, okay, where are the cases where I have incredible amounts of data, where I've got more complex decision making, and where I've got high value outcomes, where there is more customer value to be generated by making those decisions better. And once you understand and have those pieces in place, it's very natural and easy to say, aha, that's where I layer seamlessly on top of that process, machine learning to simply drive that better in an ever continuously improved way. Yeah, I think uh, we should expect it to look evolutionary different in the short term, and I think we should look, expect it to look more significantly different in the longer term. Again, I think the nature of manufacturing, of industry, isn't going to change. We're still building things, we're delivering them to customers, and then we're servicing them. The essence of that isn't going to go away, and machine learning isn't going to change that. What these data-driven techniques powered by machine learning have the potential to do is to make those more efficient, to take away the mundane, repeatable, boring human decision making based upon that data, allow the computers to start to do that, and then free up the human capacity to innovate on top of our products, to deliver better outcomes, to solve harder things, to think about new business models built on top of that data. And so really what I see, and we've seen this start to come out into certain places as we hear about lights out factories and things like that. Again, that's not really a, a, an effort to eliminate people, but rather it's an effort to apply people and human talents in the right areas where they can uniquely contribute relative to the simple, repeatable, boring, mundane things that may be happening in this ever-increasing data world. So I expect it to become pervasive. I expect it to drive better outcomes around repeatable workflows. And I expect it to be a instigator of what some people talk about as being digital transformation, which is how do I start to think about changing the actual business model around these capabilities or these products that I'm delivering to the market. Uh, thinking not just about do I build something, do I sell it, and do I walk away, but how do I start to think about what is the entire life cycle of servicing this? How do I start to do things like think about physical assets in subscription type of business models? All of those will be enabled by data-driven business processes powered by machine learning. So, you know, first and foremost, it would, uh, you know, simply starts with much of what we were talking about, which is what do we have and why is this such a great partnership? We have uh, with SIG a world leading manufacturer with capability around food and beverage packaging. And that is the core expertise of that company and has deep domain knowledge uh, therein. Uh, what does GE Digital have? GE Digital has a suite of software products that have been developed upon, based upon seeing 
a tremendous uh, variety and array of manufacturers, manufacturers who are optimizing the manufacturer, the delivery, and the service of those products. And so what we've done is we've had the benefit of seeing the patterns that exist, how to manage those, et cetera. And by bringing those two organizations together, SIG and GE, we can bring your domain expertise and our software expertise around how to manage those processes around things like asset performance management, around things like field service, to start to do what we were talking about earlier, which is to aggregate the data, to define uh, workflows for human-based decision-making, and to optimize processes. And then as those start to mature, as we discussed, we'll simply layer machine learning in there to make those processes ever more efficient based upon these continuous feedback loops. From a, uh, what does that mean from a privacy standpoint? The answer is absolutely. And, you know, privacy and security is core to everything that we do. And so it's, I think, one of the most interesting areas of research and development in the machine learning space, which is how do you leverage uh, these techniques? How do you leverage the potential that uh, machine learning uh, brings what I call positive externalities, i.e. the ability to make everybody better off by looking across large amounts of data, yet still do so in a way that is both secure and private for the individual customers. So that's going to be one of the most interesting areas uh, that we've been working on historically and we'll be excited to partner with SIG going forward.